Umsum was resting on the couch when he began to feel strange. His body was warm, his head heavy, and tiny shivers ran down his back. When he checked his temperature, it was higher than normal. He had a fever. Curious, he wondered, why do we get fever? Determined to find out, Umsum shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the bloodstream, where everything seemed chaotic. White blood cells were rushing around like brave soldiers, and tiny invaders called bacteria and viruses were floating everywhere. Umsum followed the white blood cells as they surrounded the intruders. They released special chemical messengers called pyrogens into the blood. Umsum followed the pyrogens as they traveled upward toward the brain. Deep inside, he reached huh? the hypothalamus, the part of the brain that controlled <laughs> body temperature. Normally, the hypothalamus kept the body around 37 degrees Celsius, but the pyrogens whispered a new instruction to raise the temperature. Instantly, the hypothalamus began its work. Blood vessels near the skin started narrowing to trap heat inside. Muscles began to shiver, creating warmth from movement. Umsum could feel the body heating up like a furnace. He realized the fever wasn't just a problem, it was part of the solution. Huh? The higher temperature made it harder for the invading germs to survive and multiply. Leaping back outside, Umsum smiled proudly. Umsum was sitting quietly on a bench when suddenly a strange sound echoed from his belly. Huh? Shocked, he wondered, why does our stomach growl? Determined to find out, he shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the stomach. The place looked almost empty, with only thin traces of food clinging to the walls. Around him, large muscles formed thick folds, huh? and they were beginning to move restlessly. Umsum watched as they tightened and relaxed, pushing the space into motion. Suddenly, the brain commanded the stomach to get ready for food. The walls obeyed. They squeezed and churned strongly, just like they did after a meal. Umsum stumbled as the powerful muscles rippled around him, shaking the empty chamber. Air and leftover digestive juices sloshed together noisily, creating echoes that bounced from wall to wall. Omsum <gasps> covered his ears as the growls rumbled all around him. He followed the vibrations downward and saw the small intestine also joining in. The walls of the intestine pushed and squeezed, sending ripples forward. This process, called peristalsis, was the body's way of moving food along. But with no food present, it only pushed air and liquid, creating even more rumbling noises. Amsum finally huh? understood the reason. The body was basically preparing itself for food. With a gentle leap, Amsum came out of his body, smiling <laughs> proudly. Amsum was enjoying a big meal of fruits and bread when he suddenly wondered, how does our digestive system work? His curiosity sparked. He shrank and <laughs> slipped inside his own mouth. All around him, teeth were grinding food into smaller pieces. Streams of saliva splashed down, making the food soft and mushy. Huh? Aumsum tried to keep his balance, but slipped and slid down the throat. Powerful muscles pushed him forward like waves, carrying him through a long tunnel called the esophagus. Suddenly, he was dropped into a huge chamber, the stomach. The walls around him moved like giant muscles, squeezing and squashing the food again and again. From the walls oozed strong digestive juices filled with acid and enzymes. The juices bubbled and frothed, turning chunks of food into a thick soupy liquid called chyme. Then the stomach squeezed the mixture into narrow winding tubes, the small intestine. Here, tiny finger-like shapes called villi covered the walls. Omsum watched in amazement <laughs> as nutrients seeped through the villi into the blood. But the powerful squeezing of the intestines tossed him back and forth. Next, 
he was carried into the large intestine. Here, water was absorbed, leaving the rest thicker and drier. Amsum tumbled along with the waist as strong muscles pushed everything forward. At last, Amsum was pushed out, landing safely outside the body. He smiled proudly. Amsum was enjoying his day when suddenly his throat tickled. Before he realized what was happening, a powerful cough shook his chest. It happened again and again, leaving him puzzled and thinking, why do we cough? Determined to find answers, Om Sum shrank himself, entered through his throat, and soon found himself in the windpipe. The walls were lined with tiny hairs called cilia. Suddenly, Om Sum huh? gasped. A mischievous dust demon was scattering tiny particles everywhere. Each time the sensitive nerves were touched, a signal raced to the brain. The brain immediately sent back instructions to the chest and stomach muscles. They squeezed tight, filled the lungs with air, and then forced the air out in a sudden blast. The deeper he went, the more he saw. In the airways of the lungs, the dust demon had released even more dust, mixing with sticky mucus. It looked thick and heavy, clinging to the sides. Suddenly, the dust and mucus trapped Om Sum too. He struggled, but could not break free. For a moment, it seemed he would not escape. But the nerves sensed the blockage and sent another urgent signal to the brain. The brain ordered the chest muscles to contract sharply. Air filled the lungs, pressure built up, and then a forceful cough blasted through the airway. The dust demon was completely blown apart, and Om Sum was carried out with the rushing air. <coughs> Om Sum was stargazing one evening when his eyes landed on Saturn. Its giant rings sparkled like a crown in the sky. Om Sum looked back at Earth and wondered, why doesn't Earth have rings like Saturn? Curious to know, he set off on a space adventure. He reached the Earth's orbit and floated nearby. Suddenly, Aumsum felt Earth's strong pull tugging at him. He realized that if rocks or ice drifted close to Earth, gravity would pull them inward. Instead of staying as rings, they would burn up in the atmosphere as shooting stars or crash down as meteorites. Then, a glowing portal appeared, carrying Om Sum back to the early days of Earth. He saw huge chunks of rock and dust swirling after a giant collision. For a moment, it looked like Earth might form rings. But as time passed, the pieces clumped together, growing larger and larger until they formed one big companion. The Moon! Long ago, icy moons or comets wandered too close to the giant planet. Saturn's powerful gravity tore them apart inside the Roche limit, a region where pieces cannot join back into a moon. The icy pieces stayed scattered, spreading out into the bright rings that still circle Saturn today. Thomson <laughs> finally understood the truth. While visiting a museum, Om Sum stood before a towering dinosaur skeleton. Its size amazed him, but the question in his mind was even bigger. What exactly killed the dinosaurs? With a leap, Om Sum magically traveled back millions of years to the age of dinosaurs. He landed in a lush green valley where enormous creatures roamed. Long-necked giants grazed on trees, Fierce hunters prowled the forests, and the land echoed with their calls. Suddenly, the sky darkened. A blazing fireball roared through the atmosphere. It was a massive asteroid hurtling toward Earth. With a deafening crash, it struck near what is today, Mexico. The ground shook violently, throwing Amsum off his feet. A wall of fire burst outward, 
racing across forests and plains. The crisis had just begun. The impact released enormous clouds of dust and smoke into the sky. The sun's light dimmed and darkness spread over the land. Plants withered without sunlight, and soon the giant herbivores had nothing left to eat. As they weakened, the hungry predators also struggled to survive. Omsum watched sadly as the once lively world grew silent. But the asteroid was not the only cause. Volcanoes erupted across the planet, spewing ash and gases that made the air even harder to breathe. The Earth's climate grew colder and harsher. The dinosaurs faced disasters they could not escape. Back at the museum, Amsum looked at the skeleton once more. Now he knew the truth. Amsum was sipping a fizzy drink when suddenly a loud burp escaped from his mouth. Embarrassed, Amsum wondered, why do we burp? Determined to know, Amsum shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the stomach. The place was busy, bubbling with liquid and food. Around him, waves of muscles were churning and mixing everything together. But what caught his attention were pockets of air rising up through the mix. Aumsum tried to find out where the bubbles came from. Some had entered when he swallowed food too quickly. Others had formed from the fizzy drink, releasing carbon dioxide gas inside the stomach. Suddenly, the brain sensed the pressure and sent a command. The stomach walls tightened and the esophageal sphincter valve at the top of the stomach opened briefly. Aumsum stumbled as the trapped air shot upward through the food pipe. It roared through the throat and with a final burst escaped through the mouth. Outside, it was heard as a burp. As another bubble rose, Aumsum clung to the moving walls. He saw that burping wasn't random or useless. It was the body's way of getting rid of extra air that didn't belong in the stomach. If the air stayed trapped, it would only cause pressure and discomfort. Leaping back outside, Omsum smiled proudly. Omsum was fast asleep one night when his dreams suddenly twisted into frightening shapes. He found himself running through endless shadows, chased by creatures that made no sense. He woke up with his heart pounding and wondered, why do we get nightmares? Determined to find out, Amsum drifted back into sleep and floated deep into his own mind. All around him were glowing bubbles of thoughts and memories. He entered a vast chamber where dreams were created. At first, the place seemed calm, with bright colors and playful scenes dancing in the bubbles. But then the shadows stirred, and from the darkness rose swirling waves of worry and stress. The shadows swept across the chamber, tossing broken memories and scraps of fear into the dream chamber. Peaceful pictures warped into strange, scary scenes. Amsum tried to steady himself, but the shadows grew stronger, feeding on every anxious thought. The chamber spun into chaos, and Amsum was pulled into a whirlwind of nightmares. He tumbled through the storm, chased by twisting shapes, each one built from fragments of his own memories. Then, Amsum noticed something important. The brain sometimes mixes worries or stresses into dreams, turning them into nightmares. By testing scary situations, the mind learns how to stay alert and safe. With this realization, the storm of shadows began to fade and the dream chamber slowly brightened. When Aum Sum awoke, he was smiling proudly as he had solved the nightmare mystery.